at Smile Eye. Brought to you by New Coke. For women's everyday headache, the formula that eases the pain and with a gentle relaxer, eases the tension behind it. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of the Broadway smash hit, Dinner at Eight's, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a gentleman who, together with all his other accomplishments, is represented in the book world by a bestseller, The Ground is Our Table, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Arlene. I hope that becomes a reliable prediction. <laughs> <laughs> I had the very great pleasure, not too many years ago, of introducing on my television show a very lovely lady, Ingrid Bergman. And tonight, it's my equal pleasure to introduce her equally lovely daughter, who has her own television program in San Francisco, Miss Pia Lindstrom. And I would like to introduce a man who plays many games very well, including What's My Line, Bennett Surf. <laughs> Good thing to trip Be over. careful. <laughs> Miss Lindstrom, you're as beautiful as your mother. Thank you. Can't say more than that. And you're as Thank handsome you. as your father, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, <laughs> Our, our, our panel moderator tonight may look a little shaky to you because he had a very unusual experience outside the theater. A lady came along with a greyhound dog just as he was coming in, and this was a very peculiar greyhound. It had buses painted on the side. No word from you. And here's John Charles Daly. <laughs> Well, I think that deserves some punishment right off the bat. And so I'll punish you. Get your masks out, my good friends, and please put them on. There is good and sufficient reason. Miss Lindstrom, it's nice to have you here. Thank you. In the East, I must say KGO out on the coast is lucky to have you. I've got two old friends out there, Dave Sachs and Vic Reed at KGO. Yeah. Do you know them? Yes, I do. Well, Especially I do. envy it's them. my boss. Ah, <laughs> nice Speaking to have you here. Sachs. Steve, it's wonderful to have you back again, sir. Thank you, John. It's nice to be had. As all of you do not need to be told. <laughs> well, that takes place in the next half hour. But Steve is, is, was with us for many, many years, and uh, it's always a joy, a kind of reunion when he comes back. And Arlene, look at that mask. I recognize wow. this. Now, here's a kick for all of the ladies, particularly in the audience, who would like to know what kind of a mask Arlene wore at the, what is the greatest party of the year, Truman Capote's Ball, of last Monday night. That's the mask that Arlene had on last Monday night. Whee! And it's a doozy. I recognize it. Bennett had one on, too, and it was a big one, which meant it was a big success. You get a big mask on Bennett, you've got it made. Now you got your mask all in place, have you, panel? Yes, sir. Good, we'll have a famous mystery challenger later on, but right now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Is that right? Excellent. Uh, and would you tell us where you're from, sir? England. Oh, nice to have you with us, Mr. Futter. May I present the panel? They're all very shy and modest and hiding behind their men. Now, if you'll come over here and join me, please, sir. We'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. By way of explanation, panel, needless to say, there are good and sufficient reasons why we've asked you to blindfold yourselves. It is our feeling that somebody on the panel, or maybe more than one on the panel, might uh, have some area of recognition if you were not masked. Beyond that, we will treat things as we do normally. We'll tell you that Mr. Futter is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin things with uh, Arlene Francis. 
If I did not have this mask on, would I recognize something about what you are wearing? Yes. Uh, would it be considered a costume? Yes. Is it a costume related to this season? No. One down and nine to go, Steve Allen. Is it a costume that is associated with entertainment? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Lindstrom. May I, this is a costume, a national costume, is that right? What is your definition of a national costume? Well, a, a costume that would pertain to a certain country as opposed to another, like Mexico or... Well, Italy. we would agree that this is a costume with which you would... Uh, 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 well, it is, really. <laughs> this is a costume with which you would normally well, let me identify... Well, rephrase it then. This, this costume that you're wearing, does it have something to do with your occupation? Yes. Could you perform your occupation less well without this costume? No. No, I don't think in the actual physical performance the costume itself makes that any difference, Mr. Sir. I like to pursue something that Miss Lindstrom left hanging in the air. Is your costume one that would identify you with the with a particular country? Yes, sir. Uh, Unless you're playing games with us, is it, is it Great Britain? It is, sir. Is it English? It is, sir. Have you anything to do with a, a, a uh, something to do with the police or legal system of England? Oh. With your permission, we will agree, Bennett, because it didn't, it, we can't give you a no, that there is an identification that has to do with the police. Uh, it has a special character and is not the main area of identification we're seeking, but you go ahead with your... In other words, you're not a London Bobby, I can assume That's that. No, sir. Are you connected with any particular building in London? Yes, sir. Would it be the Tower of London? It would, sir. Are you one of the guards at the Tower of London? Yes, sir. What is the next name, Bennett? What? The what bloody, it? bloody something? No, no, no. no, no, no. Beef eater. Oh, yes. Beef eater, please. Well, that's bloody. Beef is bloody. Beef, beef eater. Beef that's eater. Not, that's only a Bloody nickname. Mary. Yeah, that's only a nickname, beef eater. Actually, the formal name is... is uh, Yeoman. Yeoman of the... Yeoman Warder. How many are there? How many? 38 of us. 38? No, what are the qualifications? How do you become... Oh, it's dead easy. Hmm? It's dead easy. You what? can join. Just do over 22 years in the army. Royal Air Force or Royal Marines, become a warrant officer, or the last but one medal, long service good conduct, we call it 18 years undetected crime. Good. And while you're still serving, you apply for the job. If they like you, when they get you up there, then they take you on, you see? Does each medal represent 18 years of service? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> no, that'd be a little bit rough. How, 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 were you with uh, the Marines or the Royal Air Force? Oh, the Royal Army? Air Force, sir. Royal Air Force, how many As years? Was, uh, Royal Army. Yeah. Uh, 30 years. 30 years, and how long have you been uh, at the top? 16 years. 16 years. What does the word beef eater come from, sir? A Norman French word, we think. You see, when we go up there now, we're still sworn in as a yeoman waiter at table. But these days, we only stand behind the tables, not in this dress, in all gold and scarlet. I see. Which is known as state dress. Now, in the early days, when we waited on the royal family, Norman French was the language spoken in court and we used to taste the meat. Ah. So therefore, our correct name in those days, Hoofbeteer. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So we think the Cockney have turned it. Yeah. Steve? The job not only pays well, John, but you get all the gin you can drink. <laughs> <laughs> now, but besides serving at the tower, you do also escort the Queen. Oh, yes. When on state occasions, then we go out dressed in state dress with her, her Majesty the Queen. Now, do you have, are you responsible for guarding that magnificent royal jewelry that's, that's, correct, that's, how, that's part of your job? That's one of our jobs, yeah. Nobody's ever stolen any of that, have they? 1671, sir. Colonel yeah. Blood. That's before your time. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we caught it just outside the tower, please. You caught it right outside? Yeah. Yeah. Colonel Blood? Yes. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Yes. It's a historic tower. What is it? Henry VIII um, executed, or rather caused to be executed, three of his wives, didn't he? Good idea, sir, not it? Yeah. Well, no. I... 
<laughs> no, but Anne, Anne Boleyn and Lady Jane Grey. No, nothing to do with Lady Jane Grey. No, she wasn't. No, no, no. No. Only two wives. Two wives. Mm. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you did your history lessons very well. Very good. <laughs> but actually, that's another thing you do, don't you? Is oh, yes. Water we the... conduct the people around the tower, you see, and tell them the history of the town. Well, yeah, Mr. Futter, thank you, sir. You've you. done us much honor to come thank and join you. us and watch my life. <laughs> we'll have another contestant for you in just a moment after this word. And now to meet another challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Sampson? <clears throat> Baker, right, sir? <laughs> All right. Mr. Baker, where are you from? Florida. Whereabouts in Florida, sir? Fort Myers. Fort Myers, Florida. Yes. All righty. Mr. Baker, may I present the panel? <laughs> now, would you join me over here, sir? We'll let the audience in the theater and at home know exactly what your line is. Mr. Baker is self-employed and deals in a product, and we'll begin things with um, Steve Allen. You look like a healthy, uh, outdoor sort of gentleman. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me put it this way. Am I on the right track? Yes. In terms of our purpose this evening, thank you. Um, is there anything... Uh, does your work have anything to do with uh, farming, agriculture, and in the broadest of senses? No. No, I wouldn't think so, Steve. That's one down to nine to go, Miss Lindstrom. But it does have something to do with the outdoors. Yes. Perhaps. You... This is a service. Deals in a product. It's a product. You would use this product outdoors rather than indoors. No. No, afraid not. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Baker, has your product uh, got anything particularly to do with the state of Florida? Well... Mm. No, I would no. say. No, I would say this. The product is obtainable, Bennett, in well, many, did, many other places. I didn't mean that. I meant is it particularly... No, you wouldn't, for instance, with the product immediately say, ah, that's from Florida. Florida, you know. Okay. You wouldn't do that. Miss Francis. Is the product now, or has it ever been alive, the product that you deal with? Yes. Is it very often found near or around water? Yes. Is it, uh, in any sense, part of the alligator family? Well... No. 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 It's not. Four down and six to go, Mr. They have Mr. a large Allen. family, I hear. Oh, they are. <laughs> prolific. Uh, they have their own farm, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Is it a reptile? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Instrum. Could this way in any, in any way be construed as a sport? Well, yes. What you do. Perhaps you do it for a living, but others might participate in it as a, a sporting. Well, let's say, put it this way, Pia, that the, the, the product which you have identified as being alive is identified with a sporting um, activity. We'll go that far, right? Yes. And it has to do with the sea. No, the no. question was, is it found often found near or on water? And, and we've not. said yes to that. Oh, it is, yes. Okay. When you use your product, are you in a boat? Yes. Do you kill this product or look at it? No, it can be answered Thing. yes or no. Which one oh. do you have? You look at it. That'll make it no. six down and four to go, <laughs> Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Baker, you've eliminated the reptile family. Is it in the fish family? No. 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 Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Is it in the mammal family? Does this thing, this troublesome thing, live in the water? Yes, sometimes. Ah, does it live mostly on the ground, on the land? No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Vincent. <laughs> but it propels itself through the water. It yes, can. Easily. Yeah. More easily than, than on land? Mm, no. No. 
No. Uh, would it be? Oh, well, this is my time. Finished? Yeah, we're all finished. You can just uh, you can actually guess it. Crab, no. Is it a crustacean? No, it's a semi-aquatic amphibia. A semi-aquatic amphibia. Oh, My dear, he's not even one of the clubs. Oh, let's not croak. Let's not croak. Croak, isn't it? Croak. Croak. Frog. Catches frogs. That's oh. what we were looking for. Oh. Mr. Baker works for one of those special boats, you know, with an airplane motor thing on it, and uh, he catches vast numbers of big frogs, and, and then he, uh, you give them, sell them to the wholesalers, and the wholesalers supply them to restaurants all over the eastern seaboard. So, uh, depending on the rainfall, everything's fine, right? That's right. And that a good year? But when you have lots of water, it's fine. You no know water, you don't have too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> How do you keep your product out of your throat? How do you keep it up? Oh, oh it pretty young <laughs> Betty, please. Well, you, it's like a lot of things you enjoy, you know, you sing while you're gigging them and all like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Baker. It's nice to have had you with us for the rest of my life. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. And now we come to the special feature of our program, with which all of you are familiar, and the panel knows they're blindfolded at this point in the program. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Will you enter, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? panel, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin things with uh, Bennett, sir. Well, this is a season when a great many plays come to Broadway. Have you got any connection with a play that is open this season or is about to open? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Are you in the theater? Yes. Mr. Allen, are you in the movies? Yes. Miss Lindstrom. Are you best known for your roles as a comedian? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Should be. <laughs> of course. When you uh, appear in pictures, uh, is it your wont to raise your lovely voice in song? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Are you, however, raising your voice in song this season in a play on Broadway? Yes. Mr. Allen, is it a, therefore, uh, not the smartest question I ever asked, but since I'm in the middle, I might as well finish it, a musical? <laughs> yes. Sherlock Holmes has nothing on me. Oh. <laughs> Miss Lindstrom? Are you in a play that was a very famous uh, book and has been made into a film by a very famous... Hollywood actress. Yeah. Say it. I know. Well, say it. Angela Lansbury. Right. <laughs> I guess um, using the idiom. This is one time when it is not overused or abused. A smash is what Mame is called. A real smash. And she's the reason for it. And I would like to ask. Indeed. 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 At, the, at the Winter Garden here in New York, and it's nice to know where it is, but it's awful hard to get into. But oh, wow. That's, that's wonderful. Miss Lonsbury, don't you think you could sing one line of Mame for us so that people, it's sort of an advertisement for all the people who are listening to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. sort of a uh, laugh. Am I allowed to? I'll sing a whole, I'll sing a whole first act. Of you. <laughs> just, a, just a first line of bang. The first line? Sure. Uh, she doesn't know it. <laughs> my, my first line or? The first line of the song. Make it easy on yourself. Of, of a song? The song, Mame. Oh, Mame. <laughs> you coaxed the blues right out of the horn. Mame. Mame. <laughs> Uh, 
Now, did you notice something against Lou? Every time Bennett does that, I'm trying to figure now what if he's after something. He wanted to get in on that May. I, I know. Now, this is a great triumph for you, but all of us also remember many other triumphs. You were nominated for three. Oh, listen, John, I must three stop here a minute and tell you what a thrill it is to see Pia Lindstrom sitting here because we met when she was a little tiny girl when I did my first movie with our de dear mother, Ingrid Gaslight. You probably mm -hmm. don't remember, but I remember you when you were just a little sprig of a thing. <laughs> and you Here were, we are. You were nominated for a, for a, um, um, a, um, uh, an Academy Award. An Academy Award for Magic Gaslight Words. Was I never nominated. got yeah. one, but I was sure was nominated. Oh, this is a happy, lovely. <laughs> happy coincidence, Pia, that you're here with, yes. here with us. Do you think that there's any real possibility that Bennett might make a career on the musical stage? There's no doubt in my mind. Thank Absolutely you. none. <laughs> Obviously. As a Somebody just kicker. have to ask him to sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're... You're, you're a great star on Broadway. You've been a great star in Hollywood, but in many other ways that you're a great person, too, because I know your, your heart is in muscular dystrophy, and one reason we could woo you Indeed into is, to give I, us the Sunday night. Listen, I have to tell you that with this wonderful captive audience, this lovely group of people spread all across these great United States, I can't resist reminding everyone to give generously to Jerry Lewis's volunteers who are collecting now for the March Against Muscular Dystrophy. And if you are not approached by some loving soul to contribute in person, don't hesitate to just take those dollar bills and pop them in an envelope and mail them via your postmaster to the MDAA. There's no other address necessary, just the MDAA care of your local postmaster. And I know that Jerry will be thrilled. His work has been so extraordinary on behalf of muscular dystrophy that I feel anything I can do, and this is a very small thing I'm doing right now because I wanted to be on your show. No, it was nice of you to, nice <laughs> but, of you to give uh, us a, a Sunday night. It's a night. lovely opportunity. Thank well, there's you. a nice way to give a Christmas present to Angela, so I do recommend it heartily to all of you. And thanks I'd appreciate it. Great very, very much, Angela, for Thank being you. with us. Nice to have you with us. you to know I was very impressed. Would you sound that again? You know, that may. May. <laughs> and now you know what it sounds well, like in New York throat. Harbor on a very foggy, foggy <laughs> night. And panel, I must give you congratulations up to this point. We'll all, <laughs> we'll all be back after this word. May I say it's been a lot of fun, Pia, having you with us. Thank Good you trip very much. back to San Francisco and say hello to my friends out there. And Steve, God bless you. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, Merry Christmas Thank you. and Happy New Year a bit early, if we may. And good night, Arlene Francis. Good night. I'm going to send you my snapshot. Good night, Virginia. <laughs> good night, Steve. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Pierre. Good night. Good night, Bella. Good night to you. And uh, I'd have sung more, but I know Frank Sinatra is watching tonight. I didn't want him to get green with jealousy. Good night, John. That wouldn't be jealousy, Bennett. That would be apoplexy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you sound that first? Do that once more. Would oh, you I please? never, I never give a second performance. Now you, he's he's got more sense than I thought he had. Now there you are, just teasing you, Bennett. But it has been a lot of fun tonight, and uh, may we say thank you to all of you for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. Francis Gown is from Bonwood Teller. This is Johnny Olson speaking for What's 